Machine Masters. My name is MG The Future. Um, today I have another exclusive tutorial for you guys. I'll be using FL Studio for Mac Beta to talk about how to make a Wonder Girl type beat. Wonder Girl is a producer from Canada who's produced with uh, Drake, Big Sean, Travis Scott, Jay-Z, and quite a few others. Um, I wanted to cover her because she deals a lot with bass and bass is really important for this style of music. And of course, I can tell she pulls in some influences from other Canadian producers like Boy Wonder, T Minus, Eastbound, etc. And they kind of have like this hybrid trap slash drum and bass type uh, style, especially when you really analyze their kick patterns. And I know this kind of style is pretty cool because they kind of have a blend of sampled music and synthesizer music. So there's so many topics to talk about, but I'm be focusing on the bass aspect of this particular tutorial. What I've done already though, is loaded a sample um, of Bobby Womack and I'm gonna play this guy for you guys but I have it pitched all the way down to kind of give it that dark more of a texture vibe to it and that's kind of in a way but when I put the chords around it it kind of comes to life a little bit more And then to kind of blend it better on the sample, I added some EQ, the love filter, and gross beat. Since the ARP that I'm using is gated, I'm gonna gate the sample itself. And if I wanna take that a step further, I could probably copy gross beat in the filter over here. I'll just try to filter first on the synthesizer. Now the next thing I wanna talk about is the chords itself, right? And this is kinda of gonna help us with the bass. On my MIDI out channel here, which is just a placeholder for MIDI data, is the MIDI data from the Bobby Womack sample itself. A cool thing in FL Studio that I didn't talk about in the last video is instead of you drawing the scale each time and using it as a ghost channel, which is what we can find under helpers, uh, ghost channels, there's also a feature called scale highlighting. So if you know the chords or keys within the scale of your sample, you could tell FL Studio to set its piano roll to that particular scale. So in this example, it's B minor melodic. And what that means is that these shaded regions that are dark are keys that are not in your scale and then the highlighted regions are in your scale so it's a lot easier to draw bass melodies chords etc um, similar to my last video if you checked it out so I did that and that's how I end up drawing my chords to kind of follow that pattern in terms of this video we need to talk about bass because in Wonder Girls joints she usually has multiple bass lines and sometimes multiple bass patches we have the low end bass, which is similar to T minus how he used to do in his joints. We got the 808 bass that's just um, playing the role of kind of like a, the bottom of the track. And then we have the what I call the turnt up bass, which is kind of like pitchy 808s and bends. And that's kind of stuff I want to show you. So first, let me put a drum track down real quick. Now her drums are a little bit different than this because she's stacking them. If you've ever used a Boy Wonder kit, you'll know what I'm talking about. She's usually like three kicks, three snares, etc. So let me put this down and I'll show you with this. Cool. So I'm only gonna use one drum pattern. There should be two right here because she does a lot of switch ups on the drums where there's triplets at the end or there's a fill, so to speak. But I'm just using this particular kick as a placeholder. So what I wanna do is grab an 808. This particular 808 I'm gonna show you something that FL Studio is pretty good at. Um, if you have an 808 library and you have the full version of FL Studio, you could right click on your 808s if they're not marked and send them to the pitch corrector. And then the pitch corrector, which is called New Tone, will tell you the key of the bass. So mine's is already keyed as D, but if you don't have that or you have like those sample packs where there's no key signatures, or if you don't use Key Finder, you could just use New Tone real quick from a single shot that's mono and it'll tell you what key it is. In this case, it tells us it's D. Now what you do with that information is once you drag it in, you go into the gear icon or wrench on your sample channel and you set the key to D by right clicking. So it'll turn the key D blue and then it'll tell you your root note is D. 
This way, when you're programming along with the patterns that are playing, everything will be in key. So I'll copy my kick pattern, go back to my MIDI data track real quick where my chords are, and I'm going to paste the same exact kick pattern on my 808. Then I'm going to go into piano roll because I know I'm going to have to duplicate this twice. So for that, what I'm going to do is move this to the root note. This is going to be B, of course. So I extend this a little bit, move it to B. And if I want, I can copy it to B again because this is a diminished chord and this is a regular chord. Now how I normally set my 808s up in FL Studio is when I go to the envelope editor, I turn my attack all the way down, hold all the way up, decay all the way down, sustain all the way down, and it's just a release to kind of dictate how long the 808 plays. Um, and basically you're just getting the cube shape for your envelope. And then of course you can adjust the filter and stuff if you want to turn the highs and the high end down. Also if you want to bend your 808, you can turn mono on and you get the slide feature, which is pretty cool. I think this is in a this wasn't in the last version of FL Studio I've used. And if you want to do a slide or a glide, we have it built in. Portamento is here and slide is here. So you can draw a slide note as long as it overlaps with a previous unaffected note. And that's pretty much the main baseline. That's not the one that's going crazy yet. So I'm gonna just call that, it's gonna be regular. Now what we wanna do is turn that up a little bit. We're gonna do a more, uh, we'll call it a crunk baseline for lack of better words. So those work really good. That one works even better. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take that same pattern and I'm gonna copy to that base. But what I wanna do first is use my chords in the background as a reference. So I'm gonna paste it to my chord pattern and see if I can move some of these around. And what I wanna do is make them even more busier. So I'm gonna zoom in and change my snap with this magnet icon to like half steps. And let me fix this 808 too, because this one didn't get fixed yet, I just noticed. So this one's A flat. And let's change this envelope as well. to release to attack the sustain on the 808, which is dope. Now, if I want to add some more variation to it to make it stand out from the first 808, that's kind of regular, we could put it on the thirds instead. So I'm gonna take this main line, which fall on the root, and move it up here instead. Now it's too high up in register, but I'm gonna drop it down an octave and then do the opposite for these. And you can get as much as detail as you want. Um, I'll probably do a few more notes. I noticed right now though, I don't like the range of this 808, so I'll probably change it. But it works. And the reason why that works is because now you can alternate them. So you have one baseline that's the root, and you have one baseline that's the third. And that's it gets quite interesting when you do it that way. So I'm gonna show you how that transitions back and forth. So we'll cut this one, make it its own track, and we'll do it like this.
but these the arrangement will be extend out because a lot of times she'll let it ride for quite a while and do a random turn up section where the bass just goes crazy so those are the two main bases the third base is actually a synthesizer and there's many ways to get this I'm going to end up unloading sign length but if you have massive serum all of them will do basically it's kind of like a, a square lead type synth that's played at a lower register and of course if you get into those OVO sound packs a lot of times that type of presets already in there cool so I have sign length I have the synthesizer I want to use I'm going to turn it down a little bit I'm going to piano roll and pretty much the same thing I'm going to try the different notes and trace the bottoms and see what that sounds like Let me turn to mute the bass track and mute the actual kick track because usually this is by itself with no kick or bass going. That's okay. I'm going to try to follow the original sample where to have the Bobby Womack bass line was walking down. So that works. So what I would do then is make that its own track of course. So now we have three bass lines. So now we kind of liven this track up. So a few things I would do, since I know the kick drops a lot of the time, when that bass comes in I'm going to put the kick on its own track. Um, another thing I would do is probably add more drums to it so I can do that real quick. Now in terms of um, Wonder Girls drums, everything's really triplet heavy in a lot of different spaces. So there's many ways you can do that. I'm just gonna do some regular drums real quick. And when you have a triplet pattern you like, another thing that's really common in these style beats is that the pitch changes in the hi-hats similar to like the uh, Just Blaze hi-hat roll on like a flip side. He did a lot of stuff back when he used to produce for Joe Budden and um, State Property. He used to pitch his hi-hats, but Dipset on the other side, they were pitching their tom rolls. So that's just using note fine pitch in your piano roll drop down menu. And you can just kind of draw pyramids or triangles. I randomize mine because hi-hats normally don't have a strong pitch or uh, harmonic to them. Some do though, but this is typically random, basically whatever sounds best. And with your main hi-hat, their stuff is usually pitchy um, in Toronto and Canada, so you can use the multiplier on your hi-hats too and kind of darken it up. I'll filter it for fun. And then when you play that with the kick and the bass, it makes more sense. And then one last thing to do to the drums, since that kick is bothering me, because <laughs> I know her kicks are way busier, I'm going to do one more kick pattern. And the only thing different here is pr I'm probably going to add some more beats and some triplets to the end of it. Cool, something like that. And this way I can go back and forth with the kicks as well. All right, and now I'm just going to do a, a really simple arrangement to it. So let me move all this stuff away and we'll just go through the different patterns. and I'll put the hi-hats on their own pattern as well. And those fast hats will only be when the bass are, is getting turned up or there's more notes on the bass. And I'll do the same thing for the kick. I'll only add more kicks on that particular part. And to kind of transition into them smoothly, you could change the snap on your piano roll and change it to beat. And like I always do, I just pull stuff back so the transition's a little better.
Boom. So that's pretty much it, man. I, mean, I really wanted to focus on the Wonder Girl type beat so I can show you how the bass looks. Because I know a lot of times um, when we're producing, we spend so much time on chord progressions and chopping up the sample, but we kind of neglect the bass and the different options we have. We have the low end saw bass, which is always good on hooks and bridges. We have the root bass, which is really cool for just following the chords. Matter of fact, if you study Scott Storch, and you're able to melodyne some of his stuff, um, you'll notice that his kick fluctuates with the chords, not just the bass. Um, and then of course we have the turn up bass, which has more notes, more slides, and is following the third of the chords instead of the root of the chords, which kind of turns the feeling of the track, but it works. That um, helps with the chords and bringing out that, uh, that particular harmonic it's responsible for. But if there's any other producer you want me to highlight in terms of um, tight beats as far as this in the previous video, let me know and I'll see if I can find anything of value for you guys to kind of show you as far as functions and tools and arrangement goes. But anyway, thank you for joining us. Until next time.